Today I will talk about pediatric hip and femoral shaft fractures. Uh, what about the incidence of pediatric hip fractures? It is very rare compared to other associated to other injuries. It accounts for less than 1% of all pediatric fractures. Regarding the anatomy, the proximal femoral epiphysis is a single physis at birth. It started to divide at age of four years to two separate growth centers, one of the femoral head and the other at the greater token. Mechanism of injury is usually associated with high energy trauma. It accounts about 30% of cases. We should search for other associated injuries like intra-abdominal or intra-pelvic or other visceral injuries or head injuries. If the mechanism of trauma is minor trauma or repeated or there is a repeated form of fractures, you should search for pathological conditions or pathological fractures. The classification of the proximal femoral fractures or the pelvic hip or the pelvic fractures or hip fractures in pediatrics, usually we use a Dolbert classification. This is type 1 fractures, it's a transphysial fractures, it's like Sutter Harris type 1. Type 2 fractures is a trans cervical fractures, it is the most common fracture type. Type 3 is the cervical trochanteric or the busy cervical fractures. Type 4 is the intertrochanteric or tertrochanteric fractures. Type 1 is a trans cervical, this is uh, like type 1 physial injury so of Salter Harris. We should differentiate this type from slid capital femoral epiphysis, the chronic cases. How to differentiate these fractures by the slip capital femoral epiphysis? Usually it occur in a younger age group, usually below nine years old. Usually there is a history of severe, of sudden onset severe pain, and usually there is a history of severe trauma. And on the X-ray, there is a more displacement of, or of acute separation of the physis. This is X-ray of a 10 years old child with transphysial or type 1 fractures with a posterior dislocation of the epiphysis. Type 2 is the most common type of uh, pediatric hip fractures. It's a trans cervical. It accounts about 50% of cases. And unfortunately, it is associated with higher in, with a higher incidence of AVN, about 50% of cases of AVN. And the most predicator of AVN is the displacement of the fracture at the time of injury. Type 3 is the cervical trochanteric or the basic cervical fractures. It is lesser in incidence, about 20, 25, or 20 or 35 of cases. And the AVN is approximately 20 to 25 of cases. Type 4 is the pertrochanteric or intertrochanteric fractures. It is lesser in incidence, the least of inc in incidence, about 6% to 15, and the AVN is lesser than 10%. And this, is, uh, this type of fractures have the best overall outcome. Clinical features of the pediatric hair fractures, you should take a good history regarding the mechanism of injury. You should ask about uh, what about the site of pain, and usually, uh, usually, usually, the child ha ha cannot give a good description of other painful areas, so we should search for other associated injuries. On physical examination, the limb, the, the fractured limb, is externally rotated, slightly adducted, and the limb appears short. The patient is in severe pain, unable to move the limb actively. If there is a dislocation, the extremity held in flexion, adduction, and internal rotation. By examination, there is local tenderness, usually on the femoral neck, and passive motion of the extremity is markedly restricted, especially with flexion, abduction, and internal rotation. The treatment, the goal of treatment of children hip fractures are to achieve anatomical reduction, and provide stability to the fracture fragment to maintain the reduction and allow complete fracture healing. Most of these fractures treated by closed reduction of the fractures and the internal fixation, either by threaded K wires or cannulated screws in older children. 
The closed reduction maneuver consists of first of all, we start by full abduction of the normal hip to stabilize the pelvis, followed by sl slowly flexing the fractured hip and slightly abduction and internal rotation. While the surgeon observes the fracture under fluoroscopy, once a radiographic reduction is achieved, internal fixation should be performed. This is showing the closed reduction maneuver. First, we start by simple, simple, simple flexion of the fractured hip, followed by gentle traction, abduction, and the internal rotation. Once the fracture, uh, fixa fracture stability is achieved under the fluoroscopy, fixation is started. This is X-ray showing uh, uh, the previously shown case of uh, type one fracture or Salter Harris type one with transvaginal fractures. This is managed by closed reduction and internal fixation by cannulated screws. But unfortunately, after four years follow up, there is an incidence or or there is there is an AVN shown here and with with uh, prominence of the femoral of the uh, uh, of the cannulated screws and collapse of the femoral head, as we see, uh, 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 as we see here. The internal fixation devices or the screws should kept distal to the physis so as not to injure the the physial growth, uh, the physial growth plate, and not result up in a uh, growth arrest. However, the fracture stability of, uh, of prime importance and should not be compromised in an attempt to avoid the growth plate. If closed manipulation fails to achieve anatomical reduction, open reduction, either through an anterior or anterolateral approach must be performed. What about the complications associated with pediatric hip fractures? The most common complication and, ours and the most devastating complication is the AVN. And the most predisposing factors for AVN is the fracture displacement at the type of fractures at the type of initial trauma. This is the most important predisposing factor. Usually it is high common and most common in type one and type two, type two fractures. And usually it is common in older children above 12 years old. The second common complication is coxavara. Usually coxavara is a result from malreduction of the fracture or loss of reduction because of inadequate fracture stabilization. Like you see here, this is a 10 years old girl with cervical canteric fractures. The fracture line is vertical and it's fixed by two cannulated screws. Uh, but unfortunately, with the full up, it result up with uh, cutting out of the, at the metaphysis of the screws and result in a coxavara. This is managed by subprocanteric valves of the to correct the, uh, the coxavara and, re uh, and result up with good union. Third common complication is a non union, and this is an x ray showing non union of the fractured neck femur affected by cannulated screws and threaded Q wires, result up with non union here. So, valves of the was performed to promote fracture healing, as we see here, with good union also. The second topic is the femoral shaft fractures. What about the mechanism of injury? Usually, we should consider child abuse if the fracture is below the age of four years. The most common form is a child abuse. So, we should take a good history to exclude this method of injury. In adolescent age groups, high velocity motor vehicle accidents, this is the most common form of mechanism of injury to account more than 90% of all femoral shaft fractures. However, if there is a minor trauma or repeated fractures, we should take in consideration the pathological conditions. Classifications of femoral shaft fractures, usually it is a descriptive classification, either it is closed or open fractures, about the site of fractures, the proximal, middle, or distal shaft fractures, about the pattern of fractures, either it is transverse, oblique, or spiral fractures, the angulation and degree of comminution and amount of displacement, translation, and so Clinical features, we should take a good history. Usually there is severe pain of the child. On examination, a care for neurovascular examination should be performed. 
and compare to the other normal sign. And if any maneuver or any reduction, like splinting or traction applied, we should repeat the neurovascular examination and compare it to the normal side and should keep be normal all the maneuver. Radiographing finding, we should take a standard X-ray, AP, and lateral radiograph of the entire femur, including hip and knee of the epsilateral and contralateral side, especially the hips. As we see here in these X-rays, there is femoral shaft fractures, but we should not miss up the contralateral fracture neck femur. Always, we should take an X-ray clearing the epsilateral neck femur also. What about the deforming forces of the surrounding musculature resulting in characteristic deformity or displacement, especially in the proximal femur? The proximal shaft is the proximal surge fractures result in flexion because of the effect of iliopsoas muscle, muscle, abduction from abductor muscle groups, and external rotation by the external rotators. Treatment of uh, pediatric shaft fractures. The age guidelines is the most important thing. Below the age of six months, we can go in for immediate hip spica or public harness with excellent outcome with time to union average about five weeks. As you see here, this is an infant three weeks old managed by immediate hip spica or public harness and result up in a good union and good remodeling at age of four months. The age group between seven months to five years, this is regarding to, we can take in consideration the amount of shortening at the fracture site and the amount of angulation. If the shortening less than three centimeter and the angulation less than 30 degree, we can go for immediate casting in hip spike. If there is shortening more than three centimeter, or angulation more than 30 degree, we can first go for traction for a while, either skin or skeletal traction for a while, followed by the definitive treatment in hip spike. The age group six, six years to 10 years old, mostly this is routinely treated by closed or open reduction and stabilized by flexible nails. The age groups 11 years to skeletal maturity, there is a lot of options here for treatment. Usually, the flexible intramedullary nails is the acceptable choice, but we can add also the plating uh, considered for unstable pattern of fractures. And trochanteric entry nails with a smaller diameter available, it is good at good results with older children and unstable fractures. And this is allowed typical. Uh, uh, allow early weight pairing and can be used in larger children or could otherwise have a compromised result with flexible name. This is an X-ray showing, an MRI showing an avascular necrosis as a complication of intramedullary need with femoral shaft fractures in a 12 years old boy. Because this is most probably because this is a uh, hair forms entry nail and this is injured the blood supply to the femoral head. So it ends up with avascular necrosis. What about the most common complication associated with femoral shaft fractures? Usually a neurovascular injury, like vascular injury, limb length discrepancy, unacceptable angulation, rotational deformity, non-union or delayed union, compartment syndrome, and infection. The take home message children below 36 months with either physial femoral fracture should be evaluated for child abuse. Treatment with a public harness or hip spike is an option for infants below six months with either physial femoral fractures. Early spike casting or traction with delayed spike casting for children between six months to five years with a physial femoral fracture with shortening less than two centimeters. Flexible intramedullary nailing is an option to treat children between 5 to 11 years diagnosed with diaphysal femoral fractures. Rigid trochanteric entry nailing, submuscular plating, flexible intramedullary nailing are treatment options for children 11 years to skeletal maturity 
who are diagnosed with diaphyseal femoral fractures, but bio forms and near bio forms entry, rigid kneeling are not option for treatment. There is no strong recommendation for or against removal of surgical implants for asymptomatic patients after treatment of diaphyseal femoral fractures. There is no strong recommendation for or against the use of clogged versus non-logged plates for fixation of pediatric femur. There is no strong recommendation for or against physical therapy to improve functions after treatment for pediatric diaphyseal femoral fractures. Thank you.